I married a man who had a daughter. But Marcus and I disagreed about how his daughter should be educated. Our relationship became strained. Even my bond with his daughter suffered. Then something unexpected happened. Both my husband and his daughter started ignoring me. They wouldn't respond to my greetings or talk to me. Even when they did speak, they excluded me. Despite my efforts to mend things, nothing helped. Feeling hopeless, I overheard a hurtful conversation between them. I couldn't bear being ignored like this forever, so I made the tough decision to leave home. Later, something unbelievable happened involving my husband and his daughter. My name is Mary, and I'm 30 years old. I work at an ID company. I've been married to Marcus for two years. He's nine years older than me. We met through a friend and hit it off because of Marcus's kind and caring personality. My daughter Anna is 14 years old. The three of us live together in a condo. Anna isn't my biological daughter, she's Marcus's daughter from his previous marriage. Marcus and his ex-wife divorced when Anna was young because they were both busy with work. After the divorce, Marcus's ex-wife gave up custody of Anna and disappeared. Before Marcus and I got married, he told me about his divorce and that he had a child. I was hesitant to get involved because of this, but I decided to meet Anna anyway. Anna appeared to be a modern girl, dressed in stylish clothes, and was very cute. Nice to meet you. I'm Anna. Thank you for always taking care of Dad. Anna greeted me cheerfully, sensing my nervousness. Hum, nice to meet you too. I'm Mary, I replied. Likewise. Ungrateful to Marcus, Anna continued. Oh my gosh, don't be so nervous. I wanted to chat with you too, Anna, I said, trying to relax. Anna didn't seem to mind Marcus and me dating. In fact, she seemed somewhat happy about it. Being without a mom has always made me feel lonely. I know Dad's been doing his best for me, but Mary seems really nice and we get along well. So I'd be happy if you became my mom, Anna said. When I heard that, I felt a strong desire to be her mother. Eventually, Marcus proposed to me and I accepted. Initially, my parents were unsure about my marrying someone with a child. It's natural for parents to have concerns when their daughter is entering into a family where she's not the biological parent of the child. However, I worked hard to persuade them. I really want to build a family with Marcus and Anna, so I put in a lot of effort, I explained. My sincere feelings must have reached my parents because they eventually gave their approval for the marriage. That's how I ended up marrying Marcus against the odds. In the beginning of our marriage, things went smoothly. Anna even started calling me mom, and Marcus was kind to me. But over time, things began to change. After dinner, Anna didn't bother to clean her plate and just relaxed on the living room sofa. Meanwhile, Marcus sat next to her, watching TV and drinking alcohol. Anna, please clean up your plate after eating, I reminded her. I've told you this before, haven't I? I thought I was stating a reasonable request, but Anna gave me a displeased look and stared at me seriously. It's such a hassle. Can't you just do it, Mom? No, you need to clean up after yourself. You're in middle school now, so you should start taking responsibility. Don't lecture me about every little thing. You're so annoying. Just because I asked Anna to do the dishes, she started showing a rebellious attitude towards me. I got annoyed and ended up scolding her sternly. What's with that attitude? I argued with Anna, but Marcus took her side. Hey, don't say mean things just because Anna is your stepdaughter. You should clean up after dinner yourself, Marcus said. I'm not scolding her because she's my stepdaughter. I'm saying it for her own good. Anna and Marcus left all the household chores to me. They didn't volunteer to help, and though they'd pitch in if asked, they complained about it. Even though I said we're a family and should work together, Marcus said, housework is women's work. You're being unfair to me even though I work too, Anna retorted. When I'm busy and chores get neglected, they always complain that I'm slacking off. On top of everything, Marcus and I disagreed about Anna's education. Anna, who is 14 years old and in 8th grade, is getting ready for high school entrance exams, but she spends a lot of time idle instead of studying. Anna always says, I don't need to study hard. I can get good grades without studying much. It's true that Anna is naturally smart, so she manages to do decently in school even with minimal studying. But without studying, passing exams, especially for the private high school she wants to attend, will be difficult. It's crucial for her future success that she develops good study habits. That's why I've been encouraging Anna to study more. But Anna just finds me annoying and tells me to shut up. She rebels against my advice. When I tried talking to Marcus about it, he didn't seem to listen. Anna will be fine. She's smart and reliable. Nagging her like that will only demotivate her, Marcus said. Don't say things like that. High school will be much tougher for her. If she's going to a private school, it's even more important for her to understand the importance of studying. Shut up. You're not her real mother, so don't act all high and mighty. Have you become more unpleasant since before we got married? We've argued a lot about Anna's education, and it's strained our relationship, 
Lately, Marcus has been spending more time away from home. He says it's because of work, but I wonder if he's avoiding me. My relationship with Anna has also gotten very tense. Her rebellious attitude makes me feel sad. I think about divorce sometimes, but I can't decide. I convinced my parents to support our marriage, so I worry they'll be disappointed if we divorce after just two years. Amidst these worries, something strange happened one morning. When I greeted Anna, something weird happened. Anna, good morning. Breakfast is ready, so go ahead and eat. Anna didn't respond and just went to the kitchen. I was puzzled by her behavior. Did she not hear me? I wondered, but it seemed different. No matter how much I tried to talk to her after that, Anna ignored me. Even when I said, have a good day, as she left for school or welcome back, when she came home, she acted as if I didn't exist at all. Confused and worried, I turned to Marcus as soon as he came home from work. Hey, Marcus, I need to talk to you about something concerning Anna. But to my surprise, Marcus didn't respond to me either. Marcus? Wait, why aren't you answering me? I tried desperately to talk to him even through dinner, but both Marcus and Anna stayed silent, retreating to their rooms without saying a word. From that point on, they completely ignored me. No matter how hard I tried to engage with them, they wouldn't acknowledge me. Even when I tried to join their conversations, they acted as though I wasn't there. I took on all the household chores and tried to get their attention by making their favorite meals, but nothing seemed to work. Doing everything alone while also working slowly wore me down. On weekends, Marcus and Anna started going out to eat together more often, leaving me behind. Despite us being a family, I felt completely excluded, and it hurt me deeply. How did things come to this? There had been tension lately, but being treated like this was unbearable. I couldn't understand why they had suddenly started ignoring me. Every attempt I made to talk to them was met with silence, and it felt like my heart was breaking. Then one day, a phone call left me astonished. When I came home from work, Marcus and Anna were chatting. Anna said something that shocked me. Mom is so naive, lolol, making a disrespectful comment about me. She proudly said, we ignored her on purpose, and it worked. Dad and I just acted like she wasn't there, and she ended up doing all the chores without a fuss. We should've ignored her sooner. Dad agreed, plus she's earning our living and keeping the house in order. She used to be cheeky, but lately she's been quieter and more helpful. It's really working out well, lol. I'm starting high school soon and need money, so mom will have to work harder. LOL. Life is so comfortable now that we're just ignoring her. LOL. Laughing loudly, my husband and daughter were having this conversation, joking about how she was originally hired as a housekeeper. When I overheard them, I lost my patience completely. I'll never forgive them. They'll both pay for this. The next morning, after getting ready, I greeted Marcus and Anna, but as usual, they ignored me. Anna even clicked her tongue. After they left, I packed my things and left the house. When I unexpectedly returned later that day, my family was surprised. But when they heard what had happened, they were supportive. You can stay as long as you need, they assured me. My parents sympathized, saying, it must have been so tough. Their concern made me want to cry. Despite urging my parents to accept Marcus in the first place, I expected blame, but they cared more about me than anything else. A few days later, Marcus called me in a panic while I was relaxing at my parents' house. When I answered, annoyed, he immediately started shouting. Where the hell are you? How dare you as a mother gallivant around like this? Aren't you ashamed? Get back home right now. I couldn't believe he was yelling at me like this, especially after not hearing from him for so long. Fed up, I told him firmly, no, Marcus, I'm not coming back. I'm divorcing you. I can't deal with you anymore. What? What nonsense are you talking? Stop acting like a child just because I ignored you for a while. We're not getting divorced, he insisted, probably because he didn't want to lose the help around the house. But then I dropped a bombshell. No, we are getting divorced because you're cheating, aren't you? That call I received earlier wasn't from his work, it was from his mistress's husband. Marcus hadn't been working late, he'd been meeting his lover. When he and Anna went on vacation, he was out to dinner with someone else. During their conversation, I overheard something unsettling. Dad's lover, she's beautiful and pretty. I wish she was my mom so I could brag about it to everyone at school. I agree with you, but she's married. Besides, I can't have her doing housework. Her hands are too beautiful. Housekeeping is for someone simple like Mary. Marcus never imagined I knew about his affair. I hit him with another bombshell. I'm filing for divorce and demanding a lemony. I've also sold our apartment. You need to leave. The apartment where we lived was bought by my father before we married and was in my name. So I hired movers and secretly moved all my belongings to a new place. After we left, I sold the old apartment and bought a new one for myself, with my father's support. I also sent Marcus and Anna's things to his parents' house with a letter explaining everything.
They had nowhere else to go now that Marcus's brother's family lives with their parents and he's estranged from his father. On top of it all, he was cheating, which will likely lead to him being disowned by his family. Marcus, feeling trapped, desperately begged for forgiveness over the phone. I'm sorry. I got carried away. I love you, Mary. Please forgive me. He apologized sincerely, but forgiveness wasn't something I could give him. I tried so hard to build a real family with them. I scolded Anna because I was worried about her future. I argued with Marcus because I wanted us to think about our daughter Anna together as a couple. But Marcus and Anna ignored me and hurt me over trivial reasons, like wanting an easy life or having things their way. I can't live with people like that anymore. You and Anna don't want a family, you just want a maid to boss around whenever it suits you, right? I've tried to make a family with you, but it's been a painful experience. I can't stay with people like you forever. I'm not thinking like that. I'm truly sorry. Anna wants to apologize to her mom too. She's not a mean-spirited girl who mocks others. Didn't Anna say she wished she had a beautiful mom? Maybe she'd be happier with someone else besides me. Just stay away from me. With that, I hung up on Marcus. A few days later, the divorce with Marcus was finalized through a lawyer. I demanded compensation from both him and his lover. Apparently, the lover's husband also demanded compensation from them. Marcus used up his savings, but it wasn't enough, so he had to take out a loan to pay both of our compensations. Marcus and Anna got kicked out of their apartment and now live in a cheap, old one. Anna borrowed money from her parents to pay the damages and is now working at a relative's factory. Just when Mary thought it was all over, Marcus unexpectedly asked for reconciliation. Hey, Mary, please give us another chance. Why are you saying this now? We're already divorced. We're strangers. Don't contact me. Don't say that. Anna is in trouble right now. Marcus explained that because of his debts, they couldn't afford Anna's tuition at the prestigious Prate High School she dreamed of attending. Anna reluctantly enrolled in a public high school where she ended up being disliked and isolated by her classmates due to her difficult personality. Anna, feeling rejected by her classmates, has become withdrawn and spends her days taking out her frustrations on Marcus. On top of that, no one is doing the housework, and the apartment is getting dirtier and smelling bad. They might even get evicted soon. Marcus tearfully told his story, but I realized it was all his fault. I won't get back together with you. Don't contact me again. I firmly refused to reconcile and blocked Marcus's number. Now I'm living peacefully at my parents' house and focusing on my work. After everything that happened with my family, I'm not thinking about marriage for a while. Right now, I just want to become better at judging men.